Update. My girlfriend confessed to having feelings for my sister's husband. Original post. My girlfriend of six months just admitted to having feelings for my sister's husband, currently dealing with issues. I'm confused and hurt, but her statement just made sense of all the weird stuff that happened in the past couple of months. I remember when I first brought her to meet my family, brother-in-law didn't come because he was sick. My sister kept talking to his sister on the phone to check in on him. I remember we were talking about him, and she hadn't met him yet, just stared. Second she visited, brother-in-law came, and I remember when I stood there with my girlfriend next to me waiting to greet brother-in-law. I looked at her, and something seemed off with the way she was looking at him. The rest of the evening, she kept to herself and avoided us. Third time she visited, I noticed that she started dressing up more nicely, putting heavier makeup, ton of perfume etc. I noticed a strange behavior all around. Plus, she seemed distant and refused to let me hold her hand when we were all sitting talking in the living room including brother-in-law. I then found out that she started visiting my parents' house randomly and without me, probably hoping to see brother-in-law there. At first I couldn't find an explanation, but yesterday, she broke down and said that she was no longer sure about us and admitted to having feelings for brother-in-law in the same breath. I blew up at her. I told her to stay the heck away from my family, after she said that she's going to find a way to tell him. We had a fight and I kicked her out. I feel so freaking dumb right now. I don't know what to do. Do I warn my sister or tell brother-in-law directly? I feel like I brought this on my family and my now ex-girlfriend is threatening to make a move. Now for the top advice before reading the update. You should tell your sister about that. Yep, as soon as possible. And his parents too. They need to know that if she comes around to their house, it's not to say hello. Not to them at least. She has some psychological issues. You owe it to your family to warn them of a potential psychodrama that may be about to unfold. Tell them all at once in a group. If it escalates, your whole family should consider a restraining order. Great idea. Definitely tell the whole family at the same time. Either over text or in person. That way they are all warned. I have a feeling the ex will still try to show up to their parents' house so they need to be warned too. Definitely speak to your sister about this. Tell everyone, all family members, so she doesn't find an opening. Tell it from the mountaintops and alert the media if necessary. These peeps, male and female, can go through an entire family, cousins, uncles, brothers, in-laws. And don't discount the moms, sisters and aunties either. Do not feel dumb, these people know how to get what they want and from whom. They read a room quick to find a way in, then it's like a recessive gene. And before you even knew it, she'd met your cousin. And now for the update. Hello. So I want to start off by saying I'm sorry for not making some things clear and answering your questions. My brother-in-law never met my ex before, nor they had a history or anything like some here assumed. He's been sick for a while and has been mostly at home. After my ex and I broke up, I went to my parents' house to put them in the picture, and I was stunned when mom told me she knew. I asked her to explain, and she told me that she noticed my ex's strange behavior after she started visiting alone and asking lots of questions about my brother-in-law. She, my mom, said she somewhat knew my ex was behaving kind of weird at the very mention of brother-in-law. I was then urged to not escalate things and to just block her and move on and not tell my sister or brother-in-law. I was stupid and listened to their advice. And two days later, my sister contacted me saying my ex showed up multiple times to her home but didn't mention anything and said she visited to chat with her. I freaked out and knew that I needed to tell her. I told her to not let her into her house anymore and arranged for us both to meet at my parents' house. My parents kept trying to talk me out of escalating things because they said my sister may not take this lightly and might get physical with my ex. My sister arrived and I told her what happened. She seemed to be in a state of disbelief and it really took her some time to digest what I told her. My parents tried to downplay it because they didn't want my sister to do anything irrational and out of anger. I apologized to her and told her that I had no idea how things turned that way and that what happened was too much for me to take but that I didn't want this to escalate. My mom suggested we let it slide and move on and not even tell brother-in-law, but my sister got into an argument with her telling her to stay out of it then left. The very next day, I got a call from my mom screaming saying my sister beat up my ex after she showed up to her house and refused to leave before seeing brother-in-law. Both got arrested, and this is when my brother-in-law understood everything. He's mad at me and refused to speak to me when I met him at the station to support my sister and give my statement. My mom said I'm the reason my sister was taken in and I haven't seen them in days. I don't know what they're gonna do. I wanted to file a restraining order, but got told I won't be eligible to get it. Not only that, but my ex is the offended party here, and me and the family basically owe her. 
My brother-in-law wants to see me tonight to have a one-on-one -on -one talk about the whole thing. Honestly, I feel ashamed I brought a legit stalker his way and got my sisters in trouble with police because of my ex. They got enough to deal with and they don't need this mess on top of it. I want to know why the mom was worried the sister would beat up the ex. That's not a typical reaction for most people. Everyone in this story just seems so unhinged from reality. My first guess is that maybe the sister had anger management issue and the mom knew. Exactly this. OP's mom knew exactly how the sister would react. That's why she practically begged OP not to tell her. She knew it would end in a physical altercation where the sister would be at fault. A normal person's reaction to their husband's stalker would have been to not answer the door when they show up, block their number, tell their husband, or call the police, not leaping to beating them up. With a good lawyer, your sister may get off. If your ex was threatening in any way towards your sister and her reluctance to leave after being told to do so multiple times, on top of proof she was stalking your brother-in-law, sister may get a slap on the wrist. Especially if it's her first offense. This is such a mess though I'm so sorry. This is not your fault. Your mother was aware of your ex's obsession and kept letting her in the house, both during your relationship and even after you broke up. They let this happen, which is the creepiest part. Your sister got physical once she realized what was going on. Did neither she or your brother-in-law suspect your ex was hitting on him? I'm sorry she got arrested, but this is not your fault. You are being made out to be the fall guy here for your ex and your enabling parents. This right here. OP's mother is the one to blame. Ex could have been taken out of the picture a long time ago. Brother-in-law could have been told first before sister was, but the mother wanted to downplay everything. Ex is a stalker and showed obsessive behavior. Mom is 100% to blame for the current situation, not OP. Last story. My mother-in-law suddenly passed away in a car accident last month. At the same time, my stalker disappeared. Original post. My mother-in-law and I never had a good relationship. She has tried to sabotage my relationship with my husband since the day she met me. I wasn't good enough for her handsome and successful boy. I contemplated ending my relationship several times, but my husband always showed that he is on my side, and I love him. A few years ago, I started getting very threatening and scary emails and texts from a person. This person knew everything about me. It didn't matter how many emails and phone numbers I changed, they or he always found me. I made several reports but nothing happened. My husband tried everything to trace the emails, but nothing came out of it. This past year I basically never left the apartment alone. I haven't received a single threatening text or email from this person in a month. After a few days I wasn't surprised, felt like I always knew it was mother-in-law deep down. My husband hasn't reacted yet. He's consumed with his grief and I don't want to bother him, especially when he bitterly told me you must be very pleased now, when we heard the news and I tried to comfort him. He apologized later and said he was just feeling guilty that he loved and chose me more that he loved her. Now I'm just waiting for him to connect the dots. Will he get it? If he does, will he talk to me about it? I don't know if I will ever bring it up to him. Also, I won't relax and go back to my normal life just yet. But I know it in my heart that it's over and I can't be happier about my life. Now for the top advice before reading the update. You know there are a lot of cases where people had tons of threatening letters and phone calls. In many, they never found out who did it, and most people assumed it was some random psycho. But I wonder how many were someone close to them instead. There was an episode of This American Life about a woman who was continuously the victim of identity theft. Bank account kept getting hit despite changing cards, banks, everything. Turned out she was living with the thief. I have a disabled friend who lives with their family, and friend's identity has been stolen a number of times. I know inside that it's friend's mom. I brought it up to friend, but they don't believe it. To add, mom takes every single bit of friend's social security disability money every month. Every. Single. Penny. It's disgusting. I cannot believe I never thought of that. My daughter has a friend that has the exact same thing happening to her. Her parents take all of her money. I will have to see about filing a report. I agree that you should let him connect the dots on his own. I wouldn't even drop hints to help him along the way. Exactly. One day he mentions, hey, at least we haven't seen the stalker in a while. Then you agree and mention how the messages seem to end abruptly and try to think back when they ended. Don't drop the exact date mother-in-law died, but say something like a few days before that. Then see what happens. Maybe if you get lucky, your husband will go through mother's things and find evidence to point to her being the stalker all on his own. We can always hope. If they start up again, it's definitely still someone in the family. They would have been too distracted or busy with this to maintain the harassment, but if it starts up again, the timing is too on the nose to ignore. 
I go to the police if it starts back up, it's definitely mentally unwell behavior, and who knows what it could lead to. Sorry you've had to deal with this. I sincerely hope that, for whatever reason, it's not actually your husband as he's my number two suspect. I watch too much investigation discovery as a youth. And now for the update. Hi, I was here maybe a month ago talking about me suspecting that my mother-in-law was my stalker who tormented me for years. I was trying to get advice about whether or not to tell my husband who was mourning her. I decided to wait a little, but after venting here, I was sure that she was my stalker. I started living like I never did before, with 10 minutes walks alone, then 15, then half an hour and so on. At first my husband didn't notice my freedom, or maybe he did but was processing it himself. Last Friday I told him that I was going out with the girls. Alone. Yes. Do you want me to drive you there? No need. Are you not afraid anymore? No, my stalker won't bother me again. He kissed me and wished me a nice evening. When I came home around midnight, he was still up. He said that he wanted to talk to me. He asked me, was my mother your stalker? Yes. He broke down crying. He said he has always suspected her and even talked to her a couple of times about it and she made him so guilty by accusing him of being my doormat. He said he noticed how I after so many years of fear and anxiety, I eventually stopped crying in my sleep. And he has noticed that I haven't woken him up for a month now. I actually don't remember half the time I woke him up in terror, but he always told me and my therapist about it whenever it happened. He apologized for never discussing it with me and never protected me from his family, even though he had suspicions. Honestly, I'm not even mad or disappointed. If the police couldn't help me, I don't know how much my husband could have done, and I just want to move on and leave this behind. We are going to start couples therapy, and my husband is planning to tell his family that mother-in-law was my stalker. He is adamant about it, and honestly I think it's a good idea. My husband has also decided not to attend the headstone setting on mother-in-law's grave. I can't imagine the terror that was inflicted on you throughout this experience. I hope you are proud of yourself and your husband for working together to find closure. It must have been incredibly difficult not telling him your suspicion towards your mother-in-law. You are far stronger than I, and likely most people, would have been if put in this predicament. Congratulations on your newly found freedom. I hope you and your husband find peace and healing in the months and years to come. Please keep us updated on how your in-laws handle the situation. Denial can be difficult to overcome, especially when it revolves around a family member's actions. I remember reading your original post and being deeply troubled by the circumstances you were facing. I don't know you, but I want you to know that I admire your strength. I'm so happy that I got my life back, and that my husband doesn't hate me for it. He believed me. The love and mutual respect you two share shows so clearly through your story. You had the grace to give him time to come to the realization on his own. He had the grace to recognize how your struggling coincided with his mother's presence in your lives. It's a beautiful outcome to a deeply troubling experience. Y'all must be two very strong people who have found each other and made the decision to navigate this world as partners. Here's to a lifetime of love and understanding. I wanted so many times to leave the relationship because I couldn't take the stalking any longer, but he has been nothing but supportive and kind to me, and I love him so much. I'm glad we stuck together. I hope I didn't oversimplify your struggle in my response, not that you implied I had. Just reading back on my comment I realized that I may have been too flowery for the seriousness of your situation. You must have fought through most of the trauma alone. Not that your husband wasn't present and attentive, but because the stalking was targeted at you and it was your safety that was put at risk. I can't imagine how lonely that must have felt. I genuinely hope your in-laws display the same level of understanding and support as your husband has. Absolutely not, your comments are exactly the type I want right now. Because I don't want to look back to that period, ever. I remember your post. I'm amazed you had the self-control not to say anything to him. I'm not sure I would have. I'm sorry she put you through such hell, but so glad for you that it's over. I hope that your husband is able to process this and truly come to terms with what his mother put you through. What she ultimately put you both through. Enjoy your freedom from fear and I wish many happy years for you both. I didn't want to talk to him while he was already down. It didn't feel right. 